Good morning, friends. I, Professor Arvind Mudhedha, from the Department of Mechanical Engineering. I welcome you all for the subject Design of Machine Elements One. Today, in this video, we are going to study about the different types of loading, that is, axial bending, torsion, and shear loading. After this topic, we are going to uh, study about the factor of safety and uh, principal stresses and principal strengths, the components subjected to biaxial and the triaxial stresses. So let us start with the types of loading. So in this figure, here we can see the axial loading. So axial loading is nothing but the load which is acting along the axis of the component. So tensile loading and the compressive loading are the two best examples of the axial loading. So here in this figure you can see that two equal and opposite two equal forces acting towards each other which creates a compressive stresses in this component. So since the load is acting along the axis of the component, so it is a axial loading. And here in this tensile load, the two equal and opposite forces acting away from each other are also acting along the axis of the component. So this is also an axial loading. And next here we have the bending. In this bending, we can see that the external loads are acting right angles to its longitudinal axis. So this is the longitudinal axis and the, the loads are acting at the right angles to it. So this type of loading is known as a bending load. Next, we have the torsion. In the torsional loading, we can see that a member is twisted by a couple is a pure shear. But its intensity on any fiber depends on the distance on the fiber from the central line of the twisted member. Next, we have the shear. In this shear loading, we can see that the forces acting tangentially along the surface which is known as the shear loading. Due to these different types of loading, the different types of stresses will be induced in each member. Next, let us see the stresses induced in each of the member. So in the axial loading, the load, loads are acting along the axis of the member, it may be compressive load or it may be tensile load. The direct stress is calculated with the help of the equation, stress is equal to load divided by area and uh, strain is calculated with the help of equation, stress divided by Young's modulus. So these are the equations used for calculating the stress and strain in the case of axial loading. Next we have bending. A beam is a structural member on which a system of external loads acts at right angles to its longitudinal axis. So in this figure you can see that the loads are acting perpendicular to its longitudinal axis. Due to these external loads, bending moments and shear forces are set up at any point along the length of the beam. Hence, the beam has to resist the action of bending moment and shear force. The longitudinal stress produced at any section to resist the bending is known as bending stress. The bending stress is calculated using the equation sigma b is equal to m into y divided by i where sigma b represents bending stress m is a calculated bending moment y small y it is y is the vertical distance away from the neutral axis and i is the moment of inertia around the neutral axis here i would like to tell you that all these equations are available in the data handbook so it is better to use the data handbook from the beginning only so you can refer either uh, K. Mahadevan and Balveer Reddy or H. G. Patel for this. 
So these equations are available in the data handle. Next we have the torsion. The twisting of a body by external forces tending to turn one end of the part about a longitudinal axis while other end is held rigidly or it is turned in the opposite direction is known as a is known as a torsion. The stresses produced in a member twisted by a couple is a pure shear. But its intensity on any fiber depends on the distance of the fiber from the center line of the twisted member. Here in this figure you can see that the torsional equation is given given as tau by r is equal to t by j which is equal to j theta by l where tau is the shear stress r is the radius t is the torque j is the polar moment of inertia g is modulus of rigidity theta is the angle of twist and l is the length so this equation is uh, used for calculating the torsional stress induced in the member again this equation is also available in the data handbook so please refer the data handbook next we have the shear stress shear stress is one which acts parallel or tangential to the surface so here you can see the loads are acting tangential to the surface the stress induced in the body when subjected to two equal and opposite forces which are acting tangentially across the resisting section is known as a shear stress as a result of which the body tends to shear off across the section such a force acting tangentially along the surface is known as a shear force so this equation will give us direct shear stress so shear stress tau is represented by the symbol tau tau is equal to load divided by area so this is the equation used for calculating the shear stress next the figure shows the combined loading condition the combined loading condition is nothing but where a member is subjected to more than uh, one or two loading conditions here you can see that the cantilever beam is subjected to the axial loading the load which is acting along the longitudinal axis of the member and uh, bending load where you can see that uh, the load is acting perpendicular to the longitudinal axis and it is also subjected to a twisting movement by a couple so such a loading conditions is known as a combined loading conditions since a machine member is uh, always expected to be uh, working under different loading conditions uh, usually the machine members will not will not be working under a single loading conditions uh, it is always a combined loading condition will be acting on the machine member so it is very important to study the combined loading conditions next we will study about the principal stresses and principal planes principal planes are the planes on which only the normal stress will act with the absence of shear stress so on this plane we can say that there is no shear stress it is a zero shear stress there will be only the normal stresses acting on the plane such a plane is known as a principal plane the normal stress across the principal plane is known as a principal stresses next we have the topic two dimensional stress field which is also known as a biaxial stress field as we know that in the most of the cases the machine members or the components will be subjected to combined loading condition in such cases the design is based on the principal stresses so the element which is subjected to a two dimensional stress field say sigma x and sigma y are the direct normal stresses 
and uh, tau xy is the shear stress. So let us consider an example where a two dimensional stress field is uh, set up on the element. So in this figure, it is shown an element under a two dimensional stress field. Sigma x and sigma y are the direct normal stresses. Here you can see this is sigma x and this is sigma y are the two normal stresses and uh, tau xy is the shear stress. The principal stresses can be obtained by the relations sigma 1 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus root of sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 whole square plus tau xy square. Sigma 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 minus root of sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 whole square plus tau xy square. Here sigma 1 indicates the maximum value of principal stress which is also known as maximum principal stress and sigma 2 indicates the minimum value of principal stress which is also known as a minimum principal stress. Here sigma x indicates the direct normal stress and this sigma x can be either in the form of a tensile stress or it may be in the form of the compressive stress. Similarly, sigma y is also a direct normal stress. Again, sigma y also can be in the form of a tension or it may be in the form of the compression. Tau xy and tau yx are the shear stresses. Since it is in the static equilibrium condition, we are considering this component is in the equilibrium condition. Therefore, tau xy is, will be equal to tau yx. Since we have taken the example of a, a two-dimensional stress system, uh, there will be no presence of the third principal stress. That is, the third principal stress sigma 3 will be equal to 0. Next, with the help of maximum principal stress sigma 1 and uh, minimum principal sigma 2, we can calculate the maximum shear stress. The maximum shear stress is equal to half of the greatest difference of any two of the three principal stresses. In this case, as the third principal stress is absent, so we can take the maximum shear stress tau max as equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2 or sigma 1 divided by 2 and sigma 2 divided by 2. So in this way under the two dimensional stress field condition uh, this is the equation to calculate maximum and minimum of principal stress and uh, this is the uh, formula for finding the maximum shear stress that is uh, uh, high, largest among the three values that is uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2 or sigma 1 divided by 2 or sigma 2 by 2. So whatever the maximum value you will get among these three that will be the maximum shear stress. Next we will discuss about the three dimensional stress field which is also known as a triaxial stress field. The figure shows a general three dimensional stress element. Here you can see that uh, sigma x, sigma y and sigma z. Okay, All the three stresses are uh, tensile in the nature. Since these are tensile in the nature, these are considered as a positive. And the uh, six shear stresses that is tau xy, tau yx, tau yz, tau zy, tau zx and tau xz are also considered as a positive. Since we are considering that the element is in static equilibrium condition and hence we can write tau xy is equal to tau yx, 
tau yz is equal to tau z y and tau z x is equal to tau x z. At particular orientation of the stress element, that is, we are considering this is a, a three-dimensional stress element. At particular orientation of this stress element, we consider all the shear stress component as zero. At this particular orientation, the normal to the faces are called principal directions, and the normal stresses which are acting on this face are called principal stresses. Since there are six faces, so there will be three principal directions and uh, three principal stresses that is sigma 1, sigma 2 and uh, sigma 3. Since there are six components, these six components of stresses are required to specify a general state of stress in three dimensions. The problem of determining the principal stress and their directions is now becomes more difficult. In this process, finding the principal stresses and their directions, the process involves finding the three roots to the cubic equation. The equation is sigma cube minus bracket sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z into sigma square plus under the bracket sigma x into sigma y plus sigma y into sigma z plus sigma x into sigma z minus tau xy whole square minus tau yz whole square minus tau zx whole square whole into sigma minus the bracket sigma x into sigma y into sigma z plus 2 into tau xy tau yz tau zx minus sigma x into tau yz square minus sigma y into tau zx square minus sigma z into tau xy square and close the bracket and uh, this should be equated to 0. Again this equation is also available in the data handbook. Through this equation we will be able to find the principal stresses sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3. Next the maximum shear stress which is equal to half of the greatest difference of any two of the three principal stresses. So here the maximum shear stress is calculated as the largest among the three values of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2 or sigma 2 minus sigma 3 divided by 2 and sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2. That is if sigma 1 is greater than equal to greater than sigma 2 and sigma 2 is greater than sigma 3. Again this equation are also available in the data handbook. Next we have the six quantities to establish the state of stress at a point can be represented by a stress matrix. So this is nothing but a, it is a state of stress on the component at any point that can be expressed as in the form of matrix sigma is equal to sigma x tau xy tau zx tau xy sigma y tau yz tau zx tau yz and sigma z. This above matrix is called a stress tensor. Since tensor has the property of being transformable from one coordinate system to another. A tensor is a matrix that generally describes a property of state of which is invariant with respect to the coordinate system. So the above matrix is called as a stress tensor. 
so stress tensor is nothing but a it is a used for uh, describing the stress at any point in any direction in a three dimensional body so that is a stress tensor next we'll consider the case where the shear stresses are absence or it is zero in that case sigma x sigma y and sigma z are the principal stresses for the element the relationship between the normal stress and the normal strain in the x y z directions are given as sigma x is equal to e divided by 1 plus mu into 1 minus 2 mu whole into 1 plus mu epsilon x plus mu into epsilon y plus epsilon z similarly so this is the uh, equation for obtaining the normal stress in the direction of x normal stress and the normal strain so similarly to obtain the normal stress and normal strain in the direction of y we have this equation and similarly to obtain the normal stresses and the normal strain in the y z direction we have this equation and modulus of rigidity can be calculated using this equation the e indicates in this equation as a modulus of elasticity g indicates as a modulus of rigidity mu is the poisson's ratio and gamma is the shear strain so so in this video we have studied about different types of loading and uh, because of those loading what kind of stresses are induced in the element or the component and what is the combined loading condition and uh, why we need to study the combined loading conditions next uh, what are the uh, principal stresses and the uh, principal plane and uh, the two dimensional stress system and the uh, three dimensional stress system and in the next video we are going to study about the factor of safety and theories of failures thank you